What's happening boys and girls? This is Lloyd and I wanted to talk to you about how to make talking animated critters. Now in this instance we are making a Billy Bass that speaks for Alexa but hopefully between this video and my website lloydbrombach.wordpress.com hopefully you can animate any creature because it will work very similarly with Siri or A-L-E-X-A -E I have to spell it because she keeps waking up so to get started, let's tear open our Billy Bass that I ordered off of eBay, and let's take a look at what's inside. Billy Bass, ladies and gentlemen, in its original form, possibly for the last time. And that's about enough of that. So from what I've read, this thing has two motors in it, and it's got a little controller and some guy um, took a motor controller and a, uh, an Arduino and uh, used it to take over the motors. I'm thinking this thing already has a motor controller in it and I just have to figure out where to inject my signal with my little DigiSpark uh, AT Tiny controller into the right spot. And the idea is I'm going to take a stereo input into this little chip and when this detects that someone is talking uh, through the speaker that the fish mouth moves. Almost too easy, maybe. Let's see what's inside. This is constructed simply enough. You can already see better double check. Going into the fish, into this motor, and these wires. A little push button and a motion detector thing in there. Okay, that's these two wires. So what kind of controller we have here. Oh wow. That is an old school Radio Shack kit. <laughs> not, not literally, but it's kind of construction. Bunch of transistors, no actual chip. FYI, these pictures should be a bit easier to read from my blog that I will link below. In a nutshell, what I'm pointing out is that although I originally thought I was going to have to trace all of those transistors and draw a circuit, I realized I didn't have to. I kind of don't care what the rest of the board does. I know that the microchip under the blob just puts out probably zero volts and then three or five volts. All I have to do is figure out which pin goes to which amplifier for which motor and inject my own signal right there. It ends up saving me a whole lot of time, tracing out every transistor, resistor, and whatnot. So what I've decided is that all those transistors are just amplifiers for the motors and the speakers, of course. Uh, and I found this little chip that connects to this header here um, that just outputs a signal I figured, one for the audio and one for each motor. I've connected the negative lead. Uh, to the negative coming from the batteries and I just have I just have uh, three volts coming right here figuring that was about what comes off of this microcontroller ordinarily I'd be worried about a um, a resistor a current limiting resistor so I don't blow the amplifier chip but there's already one on this board somewhere I don't know where and I figured if I burn it up then it's not a big deal for me to run uh, to micro center and grab a motor controller uh, so I don't have to build my own H bridge or whatever. I just thought this would be the easiest thing to do, steal what's already here. So this yellow one I decided was input from the motion detector or the push button. And then this one should be our tail movement. So tail, mouth open. Touch the 
wrong one. Now that we have a pretty good idea of how Billy Bass works and what we're going to do to make the motors go, let's talk a little bit about how we need all that to happen. In a nutshell, we're going to sample the audio signal right at the speaker. I found this to be the easiest way without having to make a special interface. We're going to sample that signal with our Arduino and write a little bit of software that decides that when there's a sudden increase in volume that it's probably an active syllable or speech happening and it's going to activate the mouth and head motors with the general purpose in out pins. It's just going to send its 5 volts out and we're going to connect that right to the original Billy Bass control board which will then of course move the actual head and mouth motors. Let's take a closer look at how we're going to sample the audio signal. So the way we actually get sound out of a speaker is you get a very small signal from your device whether that's your cell phone headphone jack or you've seen you've seen all sorts of devices labeled line in line out that is called a line level signal that is a very small audio signal we're going to pretend that this here is our audio jack and what that needs to do is take that very small signal and we put that very small signal into an amplifying device an amplifier an audio amplifier and it just has two wires, one for ground and one for your, we, we call them plus and minus, but one is just ground, um, battery negative, and one is your modulating signal. It was up and down, up and down. We put a plus on it, but that's not technically accurate. So we go into an amplifier, we come out of the amplifier as a bigger signal into our speaker. You got that much? We start with a small signal here into our amplifier and then we come out as a big signal into our speaker. Now what we're going to do with this signal now we have a big signal here at the speaker this is where our Arduino steps in or Raspberry Pi if you choose or other microcontroller really uh, I chose an Arduino because they're plentiful and cheap now and they have analog to digital converters built in ADC stands for Analog to Digital Converter. And what we need to happen now, we just steal some of the signal from here and connect it to our Arduino, just like that. Now that we understand how we go from a small signal to a big signal, and we're going to steal some of that signal. Let's take a closer look at what actually happens with this signal so we know what we need to do to measure it down here with our Arduino or Raspberry Pi. So looking a little closer at what is happening in this wire right here that we are so interested in measuring, consider this. This is just a signal that goes to a speaker. The other side goes to a ground or neutral. Uh, you could replace the speaker with a voltmeter and, and simply measure voltage. Because the way a speaker works, or a voltmeter, um, is just a response to a change in voltage. What's happening in this wire right here that we're so interested in is really just a change in voltage. Here after the amplifier, we might go up to one volt it's awful and it might come down to one volt way down here if we think this level is and this is one volt and of course there's every 0.5 volts you know down here that's not really accurate but in a nutshell to drive the speaker it's just that the voltage in this is changing so softly it might be it looks something like this in a waveform right when there's no sound at all it's just going to be a steady zero volt difference between this wire and this wire and that's what we're measuring the difference in voltage between these two wires as the music starts or we start speaking louder amplitude increases. The voltage 
rises to perhaps a volt and it drops to perhaps minus one volt compared to this reference. The same thing happens before the amplifier but much smaller. We're talking about 0 0.05 volts maybe. Like that's 50 millivolts. So it's very small and very hard to measure. Our Arduino is happy to measure uh, positive one volt. One thing to note is the Arduino can't measure below its below its ground voltage, its reference ground voltage. Um, so when we measure with the Arduino, we are not able to measure. So plus minus one volt is really two volts that something could measure if we wanted to replicate or do something with the audio signal, but we don't. Um, but all we really need to do is measure this half, and that is just fine for us. We can measure, I can be happy to tell that we have an amplitude of half a volt and call that a syllable compared to a base of zero here. So that's all we're going to do. We're going to measure the signal, we're going to measure the voltage with our Arduino instead of a regular voltmeter, which would be hard to read at these frequencies anyway, because it bounces up and down so very quick, but the Arduino can do it. And in a nutshell, that is how we are going to detect syllables. We're just going to have some software that processes this information and decides when we have voltage and when we don't. I wanted to use the original Billy Bass speaker. Plus, if you recall, our Arduino has to sample an amplified signal, which means we're going to have to find an amplifier. I originally thought I might be able to use the amplifier that's already on the original Billy Bass control board somewhere, but that didn't work out as easily as I thought. Rather than spending a bunch of time hammering out the details, I had an old set of PC speakers in a box right next to my workbench. So I did what I do and I took them apart. These are 9 volt powered speakers. Uh, I quickly made sure they worked with 5 volts like everything else on my Billy Bass creation and that wasn't a problem. So it was small enough there was plenty of room inside the original Billy Bass plaque. I installed these speakers, added an audio jack that I had pilfered from some device or another, mounted that on the Billy Bass plaque and just wired audio jack into my new amplifier which then was split to my original Billy Bass speaker and the Arduino for measuring. With all of the audio stuff, the originally Billy Bass control board head and motor were already taken care of. It was time to mount our Arduino. I really did just wire directly from the Arduino pins 12 and 13 to the original Billy Bass control board on the pins I pointed out earlier on the microcontroller. Sure, it would be prudent to add resistors right in these lines here, but when I measured on my board I was only pulling a few milliamps, which told me it was perfectly safe for Arduino to source. With all the pieces wired up, it was finally time to start really testing some code. I'll post a link in the description to my code, and you'll find more information about my algorithm and how it works in my WordPress site. This code is written in Sketch for Arduino, which is very close to C, but I tried to comment it well enough and describe it well enough in my blog that if you prefer another language, you should be able to convert it. My name is Alexa, and I'm here to say, I'm the baddest AI in the cloud today. Your responses are fast, but mine are faster. Sucker speech engines, they call me master.